The Dummy Load, What Is It and What Is It Used For? By Paul, Mike, Zero, Whiskey, November, Uniform, or 26, Charlie, Tango, 730, if you catch me on 11 metres and PMR 446. Hello, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike, Zero, Whiskey, November, Uniform, or 26, Charlie, Tango, 730, if you catch me on 11 metres and PMR 446. Okay, it's um, uh, not the video that I was planning on putting up next, because... That one, I still haven't got what I need for it. That was obviously the second part to the Ugly Ballon videos. I, as it's Sunday, so I won't have enough time to get out and get back before the shop's shut and get to work, because obviously I have to also make sure I'm back to get ready for work this afternoon. Uh, so I decided I'll just continue on with the videos in some kind of logical order. And um, just try and continue with the videos. So I'm going to talk about an important test piece of test equipment that pretty much anyone with a radio transmitter should own. It's one of these. Now this is a dummy load. This one is a 50 watt dummy load. So that means 50 watt. If you use a transmitter that's more than 50 watts on it, it's going to cause damage or destroy it. That would be the dummy load on the transmitter. And so basically what this is, is it's, these are made out of resistors, like so, wired in such a manner to produce 50 ohms on the output. Now, I'm not sure whether that 50 ohms is detectable on a normal impedance, resistance test rather, because it's in 50 ohm impedance. So... I'm going to get multimeter and see what happens there, because that's worth a look. I've never thought about that before. So if I set my multimeter to the 200 ohms position, because that's the lowest it will go, and I put my multimeter probes across it, yeah, it actually gives me... I'll show you. Well, I can keep the probes steady. Actually, oops. That's what I'm getting, about 52 to 53 ohms off this dummy load, although it says 50 ohms, but we won't quibble about a couple of ohms over. So, although all these resistors individually are marked 470 ohms, it's the way they're wired, I won't explain that, that's a uh, bit of electronic engineering and such like, known as Ohm's Law, which if you are going to study for your foundation then you'll learn the base the really basics of that anyway um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here because it was boy senseless and that's not what this channel's about so if you are curious you can look up Ohm's law on the internet but bear in mind you might it might just go way over your head so that's one type of dummy load I have another one but this one doesn't work um, there's a long story behind why that doesn't work. Now this one's got, if I can get this red cap off, a little light bulb in the end, but you'll see that light bulb's all silver and horrible because it's burnt out. And it's a special type of light bulb, you can't just stick any old light bulb in there from what I understand. So, that's also 50 ohms, but at the moment that's completely open circuit, so that's not really ideal. But you can just screw that into the back of the radio, just key up briefly, and if that lights up, it means it's transmitting. But it doesn't give. But neither of these devices give you an indication of how much power that your radio is actually putting out. In order to do that, we need a power meter. Now, I've got this one on top of here, which I'll have to disconnect. That's my combined capo, SWR and power meter. Now you'll see it's got settings for power and SWR. So if I was to connect the dummy load, put that switch to there, and I'd have to put that switch to there, that would be able to tell me whether my CBs are working. It's not brilliantly accurate. To get a proper accurate measurement out of what radio is actually putting out, you'll need to connect it to a calibrated power meter. This one isn't really calibrated as such. It's only really designed to just check. But it should give you a rough approximation of what it's actually doing. 
So that's essentially what they're for. You connect, you connect it up. Now this one you need to connect with a short cable. You can get types that have, you just simply connect straight into the back of the meter. And there's an, actually another way you can do this on a dummy load. And it won't register anything on a multimeter, but it does work as a dummy load. Well, usually for HF, from what I understand, and I'll show you it. This is actually a dummy load. All this is, and it's one you can actually make yourself if you can get hold of one of these and some screws, is a peanut butter jar filled with salt water. And if, as long as you've got a transmitter of some sort and you, you can get hold of uh, copper wire, some silicon just to seal the other side of this up and just some salt out your cupboard and water out your tap you can build that and you've got yourself a very cheap dummy load it'll only cost you for well a jar of peanut butter the connector some copper wire if you've got the copper wire lying around you save yourself some money um yeah so it's basically just water just water with some salt added um now making these is um, a little bit of a time consuming process because you need to have a transmitter on the bench that you can use for transmitting and these, this, one, so this one says 27 megahertz on it but I found this is actually alright up to about 30 although I'm going to put a proper antenna analyzer on it at some point and see what it actually does so if you want to make a salt water dummy load you just need a glass jar I wouldn't advise a plastic jar in case you're going to run a bit of power because it will heat up because it will just be put into the water as heat um, so glass jar, couple of bits of copper wire, and one of and um, an SO239 chassis connector, which you can probably find on the internet. And then you just need water from your tap and uh, some salt from your kitchen cupboard. Uh, the salt I've got is iodized salt, but that doesn't matter whether it's iodized salt or not. It would work exactly the same. I'm I've not tried it with seawater yet, which is basically straight out of the sea. I'm not sure whether that would work or not. That's worth an experiment, but that's for another day. So, again, the same principle. You connect them, uh, that up to your pow power meter, and it'll tell you what your radio is doing, if, and if your radio is working. The dummy you know, with the little red light bulb on it just tells you if your radio is actually putting out any power. It doesn't actually tell you how much, but they're, like I said, they're rated for about 5 watts, so they're only really any good for, for things like CB radios or little handhelds. So, that really covers it. Um, I use dummy loads all the time when I'm doing power tests. You'll have seen me refer to the dummy load a lot when I am uh, check over radios. And you'll see other YouTubers, uh, amateur radio ones and CB ones, refer to dummy loads as well and use them whilst they're doing power checks on radios. So, all it is, as I said, it's just either some resistors wired in such a way to get 50 ohms you can actually build it out resistors yourself there's a really cheap way of doing it if you look on UKCB radio servicing for the servicing on a shoestring series of videos uh, Richard on there he he made a dummy load out of um, a couple of resistors he tells you how to do it as well and nothing more than the connector you find on the end of the the end of the cable, a uh, PL259 and some heat shrink to cover it all, I believe it was as well. Uh, I'll have to find, I'll put a link to that video as well in the description below because then you can see how that was done. And I don't have any YouTube videos on how to build the salt water dummy load. I'm also not going to take credit for that because um, uh, I found the information online looking, f looking for a solution to. The fact I didn't really have a decent dummy load at the time, and I found that. So, but then obviously bought that that um, uh, black as a target one, which uh, which I did take the lid off just so you could see the inside. I'll put the lid back on it now, so any muck in there. Um, yeah, so that that's really it. And as as I say, you can either buy them or build them. And they're quite simple to make. The simplest being the jar full of salt water. 
and that's all there is to it really. So I've basically covered it, they're just used for power measurements and checking radios are working and they can be used in the servicing as well because obviously you would need to connect it to a dummy load if you're doing, doing any servicing into a proper test set but I believe these test sets actually have a dummy load in them anyway from what I understand, although I could be wrong. So anyways, I'll um, uh, hope to catch you on the making of the making of the ugly ball and, and that depends on if I can get out tomorrow to get all the bits and pieces I need. So if I do get out and get those bits and pieces, I'll get that video filmed and hopefully uploaded by the end of by the end of tomorrow, if not the beginning of Tuesday. So this is Paul Mike Zero Whiskey November Uniform or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. And the dummy load. Uh, well, an important piece of test gear, although often overlooked for, for many reasons, because you can't transmit using any kind of radio with, no, with nothing connected to the antenna port. So, I have seen people sell CBs on eBay that, that, that do that, just keyed up, without nothing on the antenna port, which is a bit silly. So, if you, so there's a top tip, put a dummy load on. Even if it's just one of those little red light bulb ones, they're only a couple of pounds. I'll put links to the to the two dummy loads that I do have uh, in the description as well. So I'll catch you in the next video. Seven three for now. Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to be notified of new videos as I upload them. Seventy three is from Paul Mike Zero Whiskey November Uniform or 26 Charlie Tango 730 on 11 meters and PMR 446.